Hi, I'm Jeff Linderman. I'm an elite application engineer with GoEngineer. My primary focus is on the SolidWorks Plastic Simulation add-in for SolidWorks CAD. I have over 30 years experience in the injection molding industry and enjoy getting to apply my experience to support our customers with their plastic part design and simulation. In this webinar, we will be looking at what's new in SolidWorks Plastics for 2021. Every year, SolidWorks releases a new version with enhancements that will make the workflow and design process easier and more efficient. Over the past few years, the development team for SolidWorks Plastics has made changes to the software to improve the workflow and accuracy of the simulation. In 2020, the SolidWorks Plastics user interface was changed to improve the workflow and make it similar to other SolidWorks simulation packages. For 2021, the development team has continued to make improvements to the workflow to simplify the mesh steps and the setup of the analysis. This year, there are improvements that will improve the accuracy of the results. These are what I will focus on today. There are several key enhancements that are directly related to improving the accuracy. These are the enhanced modeling of the sketch-based cooling channels, and enhanced modeling of the sketch-based runner systems, along with the addition of over 300 new materials and removed obsolete materials. Modeling is improved for baffles and bubblers that are part of the cooling system. In 2020, a baffle and a bubbler, the simulation results looks very similar. For 2021, we can see here the modeling is improved for the baffles and bubblers in part of the cooling system. The baffle cooling components, a blade inserted into NA channel, splits the flow passage to accurately model the flow passage through a baffle. For bubblers, an inner tube replaces the blade. This causes the fluid flow to cascade over the top. We can see this improvement here. The enhanced modeling of the baffle and bubbler flow channel enables the creation of an accurate hexahedral mesh across the cross section, and this is a more accurate mesh representation, improves the overall accuracy of the coolant flow in the mold solutions. Two key enhancements to the sketch based runner design are available in this release. Previously, a single layer of prism elements was applied to the core, and the rest of the cross-section, including boundary layers, was meshed with hexahedral elements. The enhanced algorithm for the runner design integrates SOLIDWORKS APIs to create realistic shapes of runner cross-sections and runner junctions of the sketch line. Enhanced meshing algorithms apply tetrahedral elements at the core and prism elements at the boundary layer when you mesh the runners. These element combinations lead to better convergence and results. Material data is a major factor in the accuracy of simulation. The material library is currently being refreshed. The SOLIDWORKS technical development team is entering into agreements with many of the world's major material manufacturers to obtain the most recent and accurate data. The newest release of Plastics 2021 has over 300 new or corrected data sets. This objective will be ongoing and the current database with more than 4,500 materials will continue to grow over time. For users that are new to SOLIDWORKS Plastics, there are tutorials that can be found in the Plastics Command Manager. There is a new tutorial added in 2021 that is a validation study to show the accuracy of plastic simulation. We can compare the images from a short shot study run at the injection molding machine to the results from a simulation analysis. This tutorial is based on the white paper from the research project with Chin Yun Christian University in Taiwan. This is a leading plastics research center. The white paper can be found and downloaded from the SOLIDWORKS website. In this tutorial, you simulate the injection molding process and validate the flow and pack results against experimental data. In this chart, we can see how the blue line, which is the test data, 
and the yellow line, which is our analysis data, follow very closely together. So let's jump into the software and see how we can access this tutorial. If I click on the SolidWorks Plastics tab, I go to Settings and Help and click on Tutorials. This will open up the SolidWorks Plastics Tutorials PDF file. There are 10 very helpful tutorial lessons included in this PDF. Now I'm going to jump back into the software again so we can see the user interface for Plastics 2021. First, I'll start a new study. With this study, I select my injection process. Single material, by injection, co-injection, multi-material over-molding was one that was added in 2021. And I can choose a solid or shell mesh. I'll choose solid. And we can see now that we have injection units. So for the injection unit number one, I'm going to open the settings. This is where we set our fill and pack settings. We also apply our material to use for this injection unit. So I'll choose one of the recently used Covestro Macrolon 2458. We can set any other settings and the filling time is automatic unless I want to overwrite it and use a user to find filling time. Injection pressure limit is also default. We can set the pack settings and then click OK. Now we can see that if I expand my cavity, I can see that the material is applied to that part. The next domains I want to set are my runner and cooling channels. So I have sketches that represent my runner and cooling channels. First I'll do my runner system. So if I select my first sketch point, this is going to represent my sprue. I want to add a draft angle, set the top of my sprue diameter to be 4 millimeters, set my draft angle 2 degrees. When I click assign, notice that the taper is going the wrong way. I can simply slip my dimension. I can also change any other settings that I want by selecting it and then reassigning it. Now let's set the next segment of my runner leg. I'm going to use 6 millimeters for the next segments. And set number of elements to be 4. I'll click on the line, click Assign. My next one I'm going to set at 3. I'll keep the diameter the same, click Assign. And lastly, I'll set the size for my subgate. I'm going to make my gate size where it enters the part to be 1.5 millimeters. Select my line and click Assign. So my sprue, runner, and gate are now defined. The next step is going to be to set my cooling channels. Once again, I'll select my domains, click on cooling channel. Very much like the process for the runners, I can set the same things for sketches. Assign those. I'll change the number of elements for my longer segments to be 8. Select these lines, click assign. Now I'm going to go to the lower section. I'm going to change the diameter of this section. Set my elements. I can multi-select lines all the way across. And even through the part, select another line, click Assign. This is because when I'm assigning it, we can see the filters on. This allows me to select lines much easier and not worry about selecting geometry on the part. I'll select these two lines, get two more lines, assign those, and these last two vertical lines in the top, right here and here, are going to be my baffle and bubblers. First one I'm going to set is my bubbler. So I'll choose bubbler. On this one, what we do is set the outer diameter, which is the 8 millimeters of the tube. And I set the inner diameter of the bubble tube that's inside. 
the height of the tube, and then I set the thickness of the tube. Notice that there's an arrow showing the direction of the flow. I want it to go the other direction. So I'll select my bubbler and flip my inlet. Now we see the direction is going the same way I want it to flow. Next I choose my baffle. Select the line. And for the baffle I set the OD and I set the blade thickness. So OD height, blade thickness. And click Assign. So now my cooling channels are assigned. Once I have a cooling system laid out, I need to assign the material for my coolant. I can open the coolant properties, the coolant material database. I'll select water. And for the second one, I can choose recently used water. Now I've got all my domains set. I need one more domain. I want to set my virtual mold. This allows me to run the analysis on the cooling and actually account for the thermal properties of the mold steel without having to have the mold modeled. Once again, I need to assign a material. I'll use a recently used P20. Many of the popular mold steels are already in there. A2, P20, stainless steel, beryllium copper. Next, we'll go to our boundary conditions. I'm going to set my injection location. My pointer diameter defaults to the same diameter that I had set for the top of the sprue. And finally, I'll set my coolant input boundary conditions. I'll choose cooling input. I'm going to pin this open so it'll stay open as I assign it. I can select the endpoints of my lines. I simply right click, it goes to the next one. So I'm going to set my outlet. I can right click to accept it. Click my inlet, unpin, check my settings, and then click OK. Very fast process to set those up. Now we can go into global parameters and look at the settings that we have in here. So I can set my clamp force limit and my ambient temperature of the process. In my flow pack settings, this is where I set my gravity downward direction for filling. So basically the orientation of your mold. So I'm going to set this one to be a positive Z. There we go. I can turn on the bending analysis if I would like to run a bending analysis. I'm not going to do that and click OK. Next, we set our warp settings. This is setting our gravity downward direction in the direction of which the part is sitting on the table and cooling to the ambient temperature. And finally, for the cool settings, I can specify a mold open time. It defaults to 5. I'll change this to 3. And we can specify if it's going to be based on the eject temperature or the cooling time. We'll go with eject temperature. Now we're ready to mesh the model. I have a choice of mesh type, tetrahedral hybrid, hexahedral, or automatic. I'm going to choose tetrahedral hybrid so we can see the steps in meshing our model. Now there's a surface mesh slider, so I can change it from fine to coarse and choose curvature base. Curvature base will automatically refine around my radii. If I need to apply more refinement, I can choose advanced mesh control in different areas of the part. So when I click on create, it's going to go through and create my shell mesh on the outer part. So this is my surface mesh. I'll click next to go to my solid mesh steps. This is where I have the option where I can come in and actually improve the meshing more if I need to on my runner system. So I can edit the inner outer layer counts same thing with our cooling channel. I'm going to leave these at default and go ahead and create my solid mesh. Building the mesh takes a little while, so let's jump back over into my presentation and review the mesh results. So we see with the mesh enhancements for our runner system, 
the runners more accurately represent what we are seeing in the real world. With our baffle blades, we can see how it actually models a gap in where the blade would be, so we can see the flow of the material over the blade. And then for the bubble tubes, we can see it puts the center channel so the fluid flow would cascade up and around and down the channel. So let's look at a, a few more enhancements. Once our simulation finishes running, we get the same results that we've had in the past, the cool flow pack and warp results. I'm going to close these and let's look at some of the new enhancements that we have for 2021 as well. Now we can actually browse our material database outside of the study. So I can open my material database, look at any materials in there, and look at any of the data on the material without affecting the current study that I have open. So my Macaron 2458 stays unchanged, I'm not going to have to remesh or anything like that. And finally, let's look at our warp results. In 2019, the create body from deformed shape was added. So we have the option to create a body as a configuration or a new part file as the deformed shape. Using the actual warp, we could save this body out, put it into an assembly and compare results and check for fit and function in an assembly or compare against the actual model. If I choose reverse warp, this will save the deformed body out as basically a negative of the warp. We could utilize this warped body to set the windage on the mold. Basically it's scaling the model up to account for your shrinkage and warpage. Technically, I could take this reverse warp part, rerun the analysis on it, and the new warped part from that analysis should be close to near net shape of the final molded part. That concludes this video on what's new for Plastics 2021. The Plastics Injection Molding Simulation add-in continues to improve and grow year after year. It is great that the development team is continually working on it to improve accuracy and simplify the workflow. In any simulation, the accuracy of the mesh and material data are key factors to achieve accurate results. With the continual improvements in SOLIDWORKS Plastics, we can be even more confident in the results. Thank you for watching. This is Jeff Linderman. Please watch for more What's new videos from Go Engineer or reach out to us for more information.